Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Drive Marketing Efficiencies with the Content Block SDK. I'm Abby Spons. I'm the Senior Product Manager for Content Builder, and I'm joined by Sam Varga, Lead Software Engineer for Content. So before we dive into how to build your own custom block and what is the block SDK, please be sure to make all purchasing decisions based on functionality that is currently available. All right, so for those of you maybe a little less familiar with the marketing cloud, the Block SDK exists within the realm of Content Builder. Content Builder is the content management system and editor for the marketing cloud. You can store, organize, search, filter, tag all of your content within a unified folder structure. You can upload content from your computer, import from classic tools, or hook into your own CMS, um, even leverage our new integrations with Sitecore and Dropbox. Once your content's there, you can leverage the drag and drop editor to really easily build engaging email content via blocks and layouts, all without any coding necessary. But because this is Trailhead DX, you guys probably care about the flip side of that. Um, you can completely code all of your emails from scratch if that's what you'd like to do. You can even toggle back and forth between code and layout views uh, so you have the best of both worlds. Now, the Block SDK enables Content Builder as an extensible platform for marketers, developers, and partners. You can build your own custom reusable blocks to solve whatever your organization's use case might be, whether that's something to support workflow or specific content needs, uh, maybe adding a map to an event email, allowing users to add text over image, or a friendly UI that generates really complex AMP script behind the scenes. You can even leverage, sorry, <laughs> um, our partners, blocks like Movable Inc. and Radius 8 from the App Exchange. All right, so now that Abby's kind of described what the Content Builder SDK and custom blocks are, let's talk a little bit about how they work. Uh, so you can see on the right there that diagram. This is the Content Builder editor um, with the block open. So first I want to start with a little bit of terminology. Uh, what you see on the right there, the canvas, it's basically made up of a template and then small little widgets that we call blocks. And blocks are basically just sections of HTML. What we have on the left is actually a custom block widget. And that is basically an iframe when someone pulls over a custom block from the custom block section of sort of the block picker uh, it will actually instantiate a new iframe with the URL of the app that was provisioned and installed packages. Uh, so if you're already familiar with the SDK, uh, you know we have some methods on there such as set and get content, set super content, and set and get data. Uh, so the set and get content basically set the HTML and AMP script uh, it's what we send to the rendering engine and what the recipient ultimately receives. Super content uh, is a funny little name. Uh, basically, it is uh, something that the person creating the content would be able to see a representation of the actual content that would be sent. So if you have highly customized code behind the block that gets created, uh, that would be rep simply represented by you know, something, something like showing the, the current iteration of what it looks like. Um, the set and get data, that's basically all the metadata about your block. So it would pretty much control the UI of your block. Uh, also, the SDK, it's, it's not a traditional SDK. Um, it, you know, it doesn't interact with uh, REST APIs or anything like that. It's simply a wrapper for cross-document messaging. So instead of doing a post message with your entire message, uh, it handles all the messaging there. You basically just say SDK dot method name, give it the arguments, and then pass it your callback. And then the editor handles all the sort of magic part of inserting it into the email asset and everything there, and then sends you, sends you back what it actually sets. Um, 
Another new thing, recently new, uh, we added a trigger auth method there, and that actually instantiates uh, yet another iframe, a one pixel iframe, in your app to go through the marketing cloud single sign-on authentication flow. So if you have an app set up, you would be able to post to the login endpoint, and then you'd be able to use your marketing cloud APIs from there. One thing it does not do is anything with third-party APIs, so anything that you use or any sort of third-party APIs, you'd be responsible for authenticating against those services. All right, so today we're gonna take a look at um, a custom block that Sam's built that addresses a use case we've seen a lot of enterprises benefit from. You likely have designers and marketers who've put together brand standards for your organizations. So look and feel, styling, font of your brand that your customers recognize and look for. It's really important that people building out content adhere to those guidelines. So with a custom block, they can add content, configure their call to action, pick an image, all while having it automatically use the right fonts, size, uh, margins, padding, so that you don't have to spend tons of time going through a lengthy approval process to make sure all of this is exactly the way it needs to be before your message goes out the door. So we're gonna take a look at a little demo. Um, so we'll be able to see how you can add your custom block to your account, what the editor looks like, and see that block in action. All right. So here we are in the marketing cloud. Our first step is going to be to go over to the setup or admin application so we can add that block that we've already built. So once I get here, I'm going to go over to uh, platform tools, apps, and installed packages. First step is really easy. Click new, give it a name. That's going to be the name that shows up for the block, so choose well. Ours is the design system. Here I've got the different components for my custom block. Most likely, you're going to use custom content blocks uh, because for this example, we're actually leveraging the API integration. We've got those first two as well, API integration and marketing cloud app. So, okay to use just one or all of them. Now that we've got that set up, I can jump over to Content Builder and that block's gonna be available to me immediately. So here's the editor, you can see, or not the editor, the grid view of Content Builder. I can see all the content in my account and create something new. Email messages, templates, reusable blocks, mobile messages even. Uh, but today, we're gonna focus on that email message. To start, I'm gonna pick a template that my organization's already built with the right header and footer in place. Go ahead and give it a name. This is gonna be my welcome newsletter. Uh, Northern Trails Outfitters is the brand we like to use. All right, so here I am in the editor, little lay of the land. I've got my blocks on the left, my preview over on the right. Because this is an email, I'm gonna add my subject first, really important piece, um, and I'm gonna add some personalization here since we know that content that's personalized performs better. Once I've got that saved, first I'm gonna walk through how I could build out this content without my custom block, just so you can see how it works. Um, so first, I'm gonna find an image that I wanna use in my email drag it over, looks good, click done editing. Now I go back over to the blocks, I'm gonna add a text block so I can add the message to my user. I can drag and drop it, I'm gonna choose to do it below that image. Um, I can type in or paste in the content that I wanna use here. And you can see in the WYSIWYG editor at top, I can pick different font options, sizes, or you know the title, header one, header two for my template. All possible to do, drag and drop interface, um, but there's some room for error here. If I pick the wrong option, um, if I forget which one I'm supposed to use, it's also a lot of clicks. So last piece here is the button. Always want to have a call to action. Uh, since this is a welcome newsletter, we're trying to learn a little more about our user, and we want them to click through, fill out their profile information. So I've dragged my bucket over. I've added my link to the NTO website, all as well. So totally feasible, um, but now with that custom block, we're gonna see how much more efficient that is. So custom section at the bottom, I find my design system block, drag it over. This is tying into two different layouts I have available. I'm gonna pick the second. 
Over at the right, you can see right away, I have my super content updated to show the layout that I'm using here. I've got access to my assets. I could pick that same image. I can go ahead and type in what that header text is and it's gonna automatically pull that right color, that right font, it looks amazing. I don't have to worry about anything else. Add in the body text, the link URL, everything looks great. It's such a fast process and from my marketer's standpoint, they don't have to worry about anyone kind of messing up what their brand standards are. All right, so now let's dive into how that is working behind the scenes. All right, uh, so where's my mouse? Uh, this is the repository that this app is built on. Um, we can see here uh, that this is actually pulling from existing content builder blocks. So when you saw the modules uh, in Abby's demo, uh, those are actually other blocks within content builder that sort of serve as the template for our uh, individual blocks. So they're what we would call a custom block template for this implementation. Uh, and how they work is basically in the HTML, uh, we have these little tags, this custom markup that basically says, okay, this is a link, it should be called this, and there's no placeholder but for instance, with the image, we say it's an image, call it a hero image, and then we give it a placeholder that shows up in the actual custom block. Uh, the other thing, which wasn't in the demo, um, this also supports individual blocks, so if you don't want to allow your users to choose the module, it sort of lets you lock down the template and email even a little bit more, uh, you can actually provision the block uh, with a specific ID in mind, and then it would just pull back that HTML, those fields, and that whole configuration for that. And the good thing is you can build it either way. So you can, you can make like 10 different blocks that all pretty much pull di from different blocks, and then have that basically be all the blocks in your email. Uh, now I'm gonna dive into the code a little bit. Uh, so, here we have our sort of main JS file. So as we can see, the first thing we're doing is pulling in the SDK from the block SDK. We instantiate the SDK. Uh, we'll kind of skip over the middle section here because it's just functions. Um, and then down here, the first thing we do in the app is we're basically getting the data. And this is sort of just a best practice. Um, we always want to set the data with what was previously we want, to make, we want to make the block look the way it previously was when the person opened it. Uh, so we store all that in metadata. So we do a get data to be able to sort of make the block the same way it was when they closed it. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is we're calling the trigger auth function, which I mentioned does the whole SSO flow and allows us to log in behind the scenes so that our API calls will finish. Um, this page, uh, it's more just showing how our proxying works. Uh, so this is the client side. Uh, we're calling a proxy route, which we'll see later. Uh, basically, just proxies to the Marketing Cloud APIs. Um, so now in here, uh, this is our server side, and this is our express uh, configuration. So we can see in our routing, uh, there's our proxy. So the first thing we're doing is verifying the authentication. And then, yeah, like I mentioned, just basically a straight proxy to exact target APIs to the Marketing Cloud APIs. Um, and this is, this is our login handler. Uh, so this is actually set up in installed packages when you create the uh, app. Uh, it will ask you for a login route, so this was ours. It's a pretty generic uh, handler for that. We're basically just taking the jot that we get from Marketing Cloud, decoding it, and then we're, we're actually set, we're saving the access token in the session, which generally isn't a good idea, but you know, it's, it's just a demo, so um, we're doing it there. And then in our 
auth, verify, which happens before the proxy call. Yeah, we're basically just checking for that access token or we're waiting and then once we have it, we're moving on to the actual proxy call. All right, so now for some best practices. Uh, as I mentioned, sort of wh while we were going over the architecture, the super content is generally what you're going to use for what shows up in the canvas, not for what's sent to the subscriber. So just an important thing to note, like super content will never be sent to the subscriber. No worries about setting it as often as, as you want. It's only for the content creator working on the email. Uh, the second one there, always use lightning design system. That's just a general best practice so that it'll look good in the marketing cloud. Uh, and then the third one I, already, I also alluded to, we always, we always want to remember the, the last state of the block. So what we put in set data, we also want to get that data as soon as we open the block to be able to restore the UI to make it look exactly like it did when they closed it. Uh, we also want to update the canvas in real time. Uh, so that's a little bit different from a lot of other places in Salesforce. Uh, usually there's a little save button. Uh, with custom block widgets, this is not the case. Uh, as soon as the user hits done editing, it destroys your iframe, so it's not, able to, it's not able to send or receive any messages from the editor. So basically, at that point, it needs to be in the state you want it to be in when you can send. And then also, and this is generally a good idea, but you know, keep, keep in mind your end user. Chances are it's going to be a, uh, someone who's a content creator, maybe not the most sophisticated user. Uh, maybe they are. Maybe you have someone who knows AMP script and part of the block is actually allowing them to play with the AMP script and set some variables. But it's al always, always good to keep in mind your end user. <laughs> All right, so now everyone's ready to go out and build their own custom blocks. Um, if you want to grab a picture of the URL at the top, that'll give you access to all of these different resources to check out. Um, they're also all available from the help documentation site. One more big call out that we're really excited about. We just announced a brand new certification for the marketing cloud specifically focused on developers. So another good URL to grab a photo of. Um, or come talk to us at Trailhead over on the other side of the campground. Uh, two last call outs. Um, if you are a marketing cloud user, AmpScript 101 is happening later today. AmpScript is our proprietary scripting language, lets you do a lot of really powerful stuff uh, in your content, so definitely encourage that one. Um, and then tomorrow, power mission critical messages to learn about the new transactional sending APIs. All right, with that, thank you so much for coming and hearing about our session today. Uh, Sam and I will be sticking around over here for a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to come talk to us.